My name is Robin Queen. I'm a professor of biomedical engineering and mechanics, as well as orthopedic surgery at Virginia Tech. And the research that I'm doing right now mostly is in uh, ACL reconstruction and uh, trying to prevent second injuries as people go back to sport. So the Granada Lab at Virginia Tech focuses mostly on lower extremity injury and injury prevention. We do a little bit of sports performance work, but our goals really are to return people back to what they love to do, um, both focusing on the joint specifically, but then also how the lower extremity um, is impacted by an injury. So the entire lower extremity, both the limb that has been injured as well as the other one. Um, and so we do that across the age spectrum from young kids with ACL tears to older adults who've had joint replacements. The work that we're doing in our ACL patients isn't specific to a sport uh, other than to say that we're looking at athletes who have um, participated in a sport that involves jumping and landing and cutting. So that could be uh, football, American football um, or soccer. Uh, basketball, volleyball, anything that involves jumping and landing um, is where we really focus. So for our ACL uh, studies, those are mostly athletes, young kids between the ages of 13 and 21. Um, the older adults that we work with are, are from the, the general public. Um, they're referred to us by their orthopedic surgeon typically after they've had a joint replacement. For the ACL patients that we're testing um, and the functional assessments that we're doing, our focus right now is understanding uh, the impacts that load and load symmetry have on their potential risk for re-injury when they go back into sport. So for that group, we're, we're in the middle of a very large study. It's a multi-center study with Virginia Tech and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, um, where we're going to recruit 360 patients at the time they uh, return back to sport and then track them for two years to see who's at risk for a second tear. So in order to do that, we're using the load sole as well as um, some 2D based video assessments of them to look at both load and load symmetry during hopping, jumping and landing, running, walking, um, as well as some psychological metrics to begin to understand kind of what comes together to with a specific patient that puts them at that increased risk, which we know is about 30 to 40 percent of them who will retear when they go back into sport. And so for us, it's really important that we're getting the data that we need that's accurate and reliable so that we can provide insights back to our clinicians about whether these patients are really ready to go back or need to remain in therapy for a little bit longer. In the ideal scenario, <laughs> it is the orthopedic surgeon, at least in the U.S. Uh, that is the person that makes the final decision. They're usually doing that in collaboration with the therapist, um, with the physio that they're seeing. However, what we're learning through the study we're doing right now is most of the time these young children are going back before they're released by their surgeon. So they're going back before they're probably ready and that's part of what we're, we're interested in understanding is whether those that go back uh, almost on a self-release versus waiting for their surgeon's release have any difference in terms of those that end up with a second tear. Um, we don't have that answer yet, but that, that's hopefully part of what we're going to be able to determine so that we can give patients and their parents, because these are, these are 13 to, to 21 year olds, right, an indication of you, know, you really do need to wait um, versus, yeah, you can probably go back when you feel good enough. And that's generally how that decision is made as the patient says, but I feel good. And so they'll go back into sport and often we're seeing them re-tear um, when they go back. So when we think about the measurement systems that we use in the lab, our goal and our hope is that they're used as a piece to the decision making process. So we will provide that information back to the clinicians, again, whether that's the physio or the physician, to make that decision. Obviously, we're there to consult, we're there to talk to them about what that data means and, and how it can relate to their patient's readiness to return. But ultimately, it is a piece of information for them to use that's objective and quantified um, for them to be able to talk to the patient and their, again, and their parents about, you know, are they really ready? Um, and what's their, their risk profile when they go back into sports so that they can make an informed decision. So when we've looked at the data that we've collected over the years, specifically in our ACL patients, what we know very clearly is that there's an asymmetry in load uh, between their operative and their non-operative limb. And for the most part, they're offloading that operative limb and overloading the non-operative limb. And so we've also done studies looking at biofeedback in those patients to try and get them loading more symmetrically. Um, and using the load sole, using force plates, using a number of different uh, tools to do that, um, using auditory and visual feedback as well as tactile feedback. So our hope is that, that through rehab intervention, we can get them back to loading symmetrically and hopefully reduce that risk of second tear. Um, and, and we're early in the phases of like, what are the real risk factors? 
but understanding that load symmetry is one of those that, that they do understand. You can bring them in, they can see it on a screen, they can understand, you know, yeah, I'm putting more force on or more weight on one side than the other is typically how we explain that to them. Um, and how do we normalize that before they go back and start playing? And the reason for me that load and, and load symmetry has become kind of the central component to that is because it is quantifiable. Often that work is done with hop distance, um, and that's just how far they can go. And most athletes are really good at, at modulating how far they go, uh, at, whereas they can't sort of fake what the load metric is. It is something they can't change, um, but it is something that we can act upon and then use that Really the ultimate goal for me is to use that as a biofeedback tool for them. So they begin to understand that they're, they're loading differently between the operative limb and their non-operative limb as they go through rehab and hopefully back into sport. And that ultimately it would be great if they could continue to use that as their back in sport, um, as their training to understand, you know, am I, am I falling back into an old pattern or am I maintaining kind of what I've learned in rehab? Ideally, you know, after they've been released, to be able to continue to follow them while in sport would be a huge advantage for us because we know that when we bring them into the lab, they are going to perform differently than they would on the field. So ultimately, when, when we're thinking about development of different technologies and where we see things going, it would be to be able to test them on the field in sport, whether that's in practice or in game situations. It somewhat depends on the sport and, and what the, the governing bodies will allow, but, but really to be able to see how they're, how they're progressing and whether or not ultimately they're performing up to the level that they were before and or whether they're performing at the same level as their teammates.